Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, just going to do a short video here on how many outlets you can install on a circuit. Uh, so today we're going to talk about that. Uh, basically, our Canadian Electrical Code uh, permits us to have 12 outlets on one circuit, one 15 amp circuit. So an outlet through definition is a power point. So that means a plug or a light fixture. That does not mean a switch. Um, so usually what we do when we rough in a house, we will put up to 12 outlets on one circuit and we won't put them on a light fix on with light fixtures. And the reason we won't do that is because outlets now require to be on arc fault breakers. An arc fault breaker detects an arc in the arc in the circuit. So if you unplug something and there's an arc, it'll trip the breaker, which is now code. So these arc fault breakers are eighty dollars a piece versus seven or eight dollars a piece for a regular breaker. So we don't want to use any more arc faults than we have to on a new home. So what we'll do is if we have two or three bedrooms, um, we'll usually put four or five plugs in each bedroom and we'll max them out to 12 on a circuit. We'll also then run a separate lighting circuit, which doesn't require an arc fault. So again, we're allowed to run up to 12 on one circuit. Now, smoke detectors do not count under this rule. So you can have as many smoke detectors as you like, they have to be on with your lighting circuit. So even though they're a power point and you're connecting something to them, do not count them in your count of 12 per circuit. So that's only the beginning of this um, with the 12 per circuit rule. It doesn't count for different types of electrical. So for example, uh, any load up to or exceeding 1500 watts requires its own dedicated circuit. So you can't put it on with anything else. For example, a washing machine that needs to have a circuit, um, a dryer that needs to have a circuit, a fridge that needs to have a circuit, a microwave that needs to have a circuit. They all need to have separate circuits. And I also want to mention about the 12 circuit rule or 12 device rule. Sometimes that's not practical. So in higher end homes, when we do larger homes with more circuits, sometimes we'll just go ahead and put the three or four outlets in the bedroom along with the light and we'll put that on an arc fault. And that's so we can divide it up room by room uh, to mark it on the panel legend so it's clear to the owner. And also if they have a lot of electrical consumption within that room, you don't want to put 12 outlets on a on a circuit um, and then have multiple bedrooms, especially if there's, you know, any amount of kids involved or they're running hair dryers or, or curling irons or what what have you. That can use up the circuit really quick and ended, ended up in tripping. So sometimes we'll go less than 12 a circuit. 12 on a, each circuit is just a, it's a maximum. Now, kitchen counter uh, or kitchen rules are totally different again. In the 70s, the 60s and 70s, they used 12 gauge two wire with 20 amp receptacles. And then in the 80s and the 90s, they went with what everyone knows as a split receptacle, which is actually two circuits in one. And these uh, receptacles could be two and two. So you could have up to two on each circuit. However, in the new code, you're now going back to 12 gauge 20 amp T slot receptacles. So we are allowed to have two on one circuit. Now it gets a little tricky when you're dealing with kitchen counters because we have to have one every six feet and you can basically have two on one circuit and then two on another circuit. Um, you actually can't stagger them. So it has to go two and two. And then if there's a fifth one, you need to have that on its own circuit. So the rules with kitchen counter receptacles are very strict. Additionally, outside outlets can be, they fall under the 12 circuit rule, but who wants 12 outside outlets on one circuit? I mean, as soon as you try to plug something in, it's gonna end up tripping. 
So we usually do one circuit for the outside plugs with a couple of outside plugs and that's that's about it. Um, now, one thing I should mention is when I say about 12 per circuit and they are uh, points where you can take power from like a light fixture, that doesn't really apply for continuous lighting circuits. So for example, if you have a lighting circuit um, and it's pot lights and the wattages are marked on the pot lights and it's specified for those pot lights only, you can run up to 1500 watts, oops, sorry. You can run up to 1500 watts on that lighting circuit. So, you know, if there's seven watt LED lights, that's a lot of lights on one circuit, which you really don't want to do because that would put your whole house on one circuit, so it would be pointless. Again, it really comes down to what you can actually do to the elect for the electrical code and what is practical. And, and sometimes those two don't come together. The, the electrical code is an absolute minimum. We often go beyond that uh, to satisfy the customer. So any other thing that would need to be on its own circuit would be things like pumps, hot water tanks, uh, all that good stuff. But the majority of it, um, is 12 per circuit. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as always. We'll have lots of more videos for you to watch and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.